the reminding. Okay, I just started the, the record, and two are pretty hard. So, um, so um, this one, in order for you to correctly, correctly, correctly implement this one, it will take you at least five hours. Okay, so this is the the expectation, and um, and uh, so so. But the the thing is that in your job in your job interview. So no one is going to ask you to implement this uh, sorting function because um, you will need to uh, first you will need to spend a, a, a lot of efforts just implementing that. Uh, but the, the thing is that it's not going to be that efficient. We have a more efficient uh, option than this one. So why not why not go to choose a, a more efficient uh, algorithm and which which is also easier to, to implement. So I, I will leave this algorithm as optional. So if you are interested, if you have time and if you are interested in, in this algorithm, so uh, go through the slides and also use go to read these subchapters to to have an understanding of this uh, uh, algorithm. So but it's not it's not uh, say say mandatory at all. And so um, but we are going to focus on two other uh, uh, so so sorting algorithms which are more popular and more important. So um, so this week we are going to to study these two uh, sorting alg algorithms, named quick sort and counting sort. So today we are going to learn quick sort, and next uh, in our Friday's lecture we are going to cover the the uh, counting sort. So um, so uh, here. Uh, so far, we have already learned insertion sort, and and so far we have already learned insertion sort and merge sort. So uh, so I'm just going to ask you two very simple questions. So what is the complexity of them? So for the insertion sort, it's going to be um, O n square. Yes, insertion sort is O n square. But what about uh, merge sort? um it's going to be um n logarithm of n yes n log n yes n log n is the is the merge sort okay so the complexity of merge sort and generally we want we want this uh complexity to be as low as possible because the lower it is it means that it's faster so uh and today uh, we're going to learn quick sort and uh so so okay so, uh, so uh, last week, we, when we learned merge sort, we introduced a design philosophy for algorithms, and we call it divide and conquer. So, divide and conquer. Can you just uh, so so uh, recall what are the three steps of divide and conquer? Is it divide, uh, conquer, and then combine? Yes, divide, conquer, and combine. Conquer and combine, okay? So there are three steps. So divide meaning that we split a big problem into smaller parts. And conquer is that we, we deal with, we solve each, each uh, we gather solutions to each sub problems individually. And combine is that is to, is to combine the solutions from uh, all the sub problems together to form the the biggest one to, to, to form the solution to the big problem. And here, um, so today, when uh, uh, the, the algorithm that we need to learn today is named quicksort, and also it follows the same design philosophy, but it uses the, the philosophy, you know, you know, it, it applies the design philosophy in a different way. So here I'm going to uh, write down the three steps of divide and conquer, divide, conquer, and uh, so here, uh, let's first re review the, the steps of merge sort, okay? The merge sort algorithm is that suppose that we're giving a big array, a very long array. We're going to cut, in, cut it into two halves. And then we, we are going to keep cutting it until each of them is only, only has one element in it. So, um, so and then, um, so, so up to here, it is the uh, divide step of merge sort. And then, um, so, so we, we need to do conquer, meaning that we need to, so, uh, we need to sort each individual arrays 
uh, each, indi each, each individual array separately. But fortunately, because each subarray only includes one number, so, the, so it means it is already sorted by itself. And so we just get the, the uh, so we, we don't need to do anything in the conquer step. And uh, so in the last step, we are going to combine the solutions together to form a longer and sort we, we're going to to combine the two sorted uh, two consecutive sorted subarrays and uh, to form a, a, a long uh, sub uh, sorted subarray and we keep combining until we keep we are going to keep combining until we combine everything okay so and last time we said that most of the work of the uh, merge fun of the merge sort is done in which step Combining. Yes. So, so in merge sort, we we do most of the work in a, in a combined step. And okay, so this is merge sort. And if, so here, let's look at what do we do with uh, uh, quick sort. So what 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 does what do we perform? What, the way that we perform quick sort is like this. So in the first step, again, we're giving a very long array. We're giving a long array, and here. So we just need, we're just going to look at the last number in the array and we call it pvert. We give it a name called pvert. Uh, so, so then we're going to perform the divide again because this, this array is too long. If the array is too long, uh, it is too much for us to sort all these numbers. So we want to divide the, this array into smaller parts. The way for us to, to divide to divide it into smaller parts are are very different from is very different from merge sort. So we are basically going to do this. Okay, we're going to divide the this array into three parts. Okay, so the first part only includes values. the 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 left uh, the first part over here only includes values that are less than or equal to the pivot. And then the pivot is going to be in the middle, okay? It's going to be in the middle. Whereas uh, all the values that are larger than the pivot is going to, to go after it in, and in the third part of the array. Okay, we're going to, so in, the, in quick sort, we're going to, uh, so, so we're uh, in each step of, the, in each divide step, we're going to divide the array into three parts. The first part are includes all the values that are smaller than the pivot, and and then the pivot is going to be in the middle, and then the uh, the uh, so so all the all the values that are larger than the pivot should go after the pivot. So we got three parts, but there is no right. So we don't care about the others of the values in the left and in the in the right parts. We, so so as long as all the values are smaller than. And uh, all, all, all the values values in the, in the left part, left subarray are smaller than the pivot. It, it is fine. Okay. Any question? Any question so far? Okay. So so if no, I'm going to continue. And here, say that let's say we just finish one step of one divide step. And so, but each so so. Here, do we need to worry about the middle array anymore? No, we don't need to worry about it because this subarray only includes one number, which is the pivot, right? And the pivot is already at its correct place. So because all the values before it is smaller than it and all the values uh, larger than it is after it, uh, are after it. So it's already in the, so it is in the correct place. Quick question, <clears throat> if I may. Sure. Uh, so if there's any numbers that are equal to the pivot, that would also go into the middle array? No. If So, okay. So in, in case that there are some values that are equal to the uh, pivot, they're going to go before the pivot. Yeah, yeah, sorry, okay. Okay, so here we have a less than or equal to. But it doesn't matter, actually. So, so, uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, if, if you want to make the problem simpler, so for now, uh, so, so uh, for now you can, what you can do is that uh, you, you just imagine, you just assume that the array only includes unique values. There is no uh, duplicate values, okay? So how so, do you find the pivot? Like, is it just the last number? 
Yes, memory? just the, the last number. Okay. Okay, just the last number in the array. Okay, so here I got a, a question from the chat area asking me to explain uh, the quick sort again. Okay, sure. So uh, let me. So if, if this is a little bit uh, uh, weird for you, let me uh, say say um, say okay. Uh, give you another example. Suppose here in our classroom we have maybe uh, six students. Let's say A, B, C, and D, and so we have E, and we have. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit more clear. So I'm going to make B like this. Okay, so uh, and make it A like this. So here I'm just drawing a picture about their height. Okay, so here say. We got six students in our classroom, and uh, my objective is to, to sort these students by their head from the shortest to the to the tallest. Okay, so so then if we follow the the uh, more, uh, quick sort, if we use quick sort to 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 sort these students by their height, so the so my step is uh, what I'm going to do is this. So first I'm going to pick this one, the last one as the pivot. Okay, so basically I'm going to move. Uh, so I'm going to divide the class into three parts, uh, three groups. The first group group only includes students that are shorter than than the pivot. So 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 we we may end up with this. Okay, we got. I'm I'm going to do some switches. Okay, so here, uh, what I'm going to do is that okay, I'm going to put A in the first place, and then it is C and it is D. Okay, A C D is here, and then. So the only two students, we have two students that are higher than the pivot F, so which are B and E. So then the third group in includes B and E. Okay, so, and then, so uh, the, the pivot goes, goes into the middle, uh, goes into the middle. So we got the pivot over here. Which is the F, so this is the pivot. Okay, so here, so we got three groups, which are this part, the pivot, and then the the the, the right part. So what we can say is, is that all the students in the first in the left group is is shorter than or were equal to the height of the pivot, whereas the uh, all the students in the last group are higher than the pivot, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. In this okay. sort, then then you wouldn't like, you would have cases like A is C where like it goes like down and then it goes back up to D and then it's not necessarily like from smallest to largest though, right? Okay, so the thing is that uh, when we divide, we don't care about the relative orders of the numbers or students in each group. As long as other values here are, are shorter than the pivot, it is fine. As long as other other values here are are larger than the pivot, it is fine. Okay. Okay. So. So here, if if we if so far, if we just finish one one di, di, uh, one divided step, one divided step. So can we say that the pivot, which is the F, is at the correct place? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. Yeah. So because all the students before it are shorter than, and all the students higher than it is up are after it. So this one, we don't need to worry about this student anymore. So it is we can just leave it over here and go to worry about the first group and the last group correct yeah okay so so um here then we can uh, so the next step is to worry about these two two groups okay so we, which i'm going to introduce here and and so i just use this example uh, as uh to to illustrate one step of the of the uh, uh, one step of the one divided step. So which is what I want to show over here. Okay. So any question? No. No. Okay. So then, 
uh, next. Uh, so, so, so far, let's say, so far we, we know that the pivot is at its correct place, but as you can see over here, the left group and the right group may not be sorted, right? These values may, may not be sorted. They, so we need to worry about each, each of them. Uh, so the thing is that, okay, again, at the left group, we are going to again apply the same step, uh, apply the same uh, divide step. We are going to pick the last value, the, the last element as the pivot, as the pivot. And then, so divide the, the left, divide the left, uh, say, say, subarray into three parts. So we got a part that is so we, where the pivot is in the middle and all the values that are larger than the pivot, smaller than the pivot is be, before it. And all the values that is larger than the new pivot is, is after, uh, after it, okay? And similarly, we are going to uh, perform the, the divide step at the right subarray over here. So uh, at the right, right subarray over here, so we are going to, to say, uh, divide it, in, it into, into three, three parts, where the left part only includes values that are less than or equal to it, and the right part only includes values that are, are larger, to, larger than the P word. Okay, so we are going to keep this, uh, keep doing these steps until each subarray, each subarray, each subarray, like uh, each left and the right part, uh, until uh, either a left or right part, it only includes one number. Okay, so we are finally we are going to 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 stop at this stage where we each subarray only includes one value, and when there is only one value, we can say we can say this. Okay, we we will have this relationship between them. Can you go over that one more time? I'm sorry. Okay, sure. So so here we just finish one divide step, and then so because the as you can see over here the left is so the pivot is so after we finish one one divide step the pivot is in its correct place. Yeah. But but the thing is that the left subarray and the right subarray may not be sorted. So you can see that here we we got A C D so they are this these three numbers are not sorted. Uh, so, but a lot, fortunately, we got these two numbers sorted, but we don't know. B before looking at these specific values, we don't know. So what we do is that, okay, so after we finish one divide step, we got the left subarray and the right subarray. We need to, uh, and we need to wor worry about them. Uh, so, so then what we, we do is that we apply the same step as we, we, we apply uh, on the whole array, which is that we pick the last value as the pivot, and divide all the values over here, all the values over here into three parts. The left part is less than or equal to the new pivot, and then uh, the pivot is in the middle. And then uh, the right part only includes values that are larger than the pivot. So similarly, we apply the same procedure to the right subarray, okay? And divide it, divide it into some, something like this shape. So at this stage, we, we have relationships among this, these values like this, okay? This is, I'm going to use the black color to denote the first pivot, okay? So this is the first pivot. So they have this relationship, okay? They, they have this relationship. And so we're going to keep dividing, we're going to keep dividing until each subarray, each subarray only includes one value. Okay, okay? okay. so here you can say if this one is, is long, it includes more than one element, we're going to divide. To, to apply the same divide step, the same divide step until each of them only includes one number. And at that time, so we can, we can we, we, the, the, the less than or equal relationship still holds between the consecutive subarrays, okay? But now each of them only includes one number. So basically all the values are sorted. Okay, all right, catch you. Thank you. No problem. Any question? No, not here. Thank okay, you. no problem. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, the the step. Uh, so uh, for us to 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 uh, apply uh, to to for, for us to do the sort. Okay, and actually, so here is just all the divided step. In this is the 
the, all the divide step of, uh, so, so up to here, we just finished the divide step in, in quicksort. And so do we need to do some concurrent and combine step after that? No. No, because here, when we finish the divide step, all the values in the in the array have already been sorted, and we 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 already reach we already reach a stage where we want to be. So then we don't need to uh, do any other efforts, perform any uh, other efforts. So so here we can see that in QuickSort we do all the all the work in the divide step, and this is very different from from merge sort, which in which we, in the divide step we only cut uh, an array into into two half, uh, two 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 uh, subarrays of, of the same size, but here when we when we perform the uh, divide step in in, in the uh, in perform the divide step in quick sort, so the left array and the right array can be cannot so it's it's very it mostly likely they do not have the same size just depending on your luck. Okay, if 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 by some luck the people just uh, the pivot value is is just the median value. It's just the median value among all the values in the array. Then we will be able to get two subarrays, left and right, of the same size. Otherwise, they are not going to be uh, the, the the length of the left and sub right subarray are not going to be the same. But yeah. it doesn't matter. That's what I was going to ask. Actually, um, what, what exactly is the complexity of quicksort? Okay, so I'm going to give the complexity at the end of the of the lecture. So uh, so far, I'm going to uh, keep it simple, because because I think for for undergraduate students, uh, uh, the uh, more important thing is to understand why this algorithm works, but uh, compared with the, the the inference of the of the complexity. So you just need to take complexity, memorize the complexity. So yes, for now, let's just keep it simple. Uh, focus on the uh, understanding. Okay, so any question before I go to explain the detailed steps of quicksort? Yes, what if what if the last, so what if you have like, remember how you said on each side you have to have one uh, item in the array uh, for you to stop doing quicksort? What if you have like one item on one side and two on the other, or you have like some kind of like odd number? Or would okay. that never happen? Okay, cool. So the question, I think your question is that say, for, for example, if we get only one number in the left subarray, whereas we get more than one values in the, in the right subarray, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yes. So in that case, for any subarray that inclu only includes one number, we stop. We don't need to, we don't need to uh, do any divide because if it only includes one number, it means that that one number is already in its correct place. Okay? Whereas for any subarray that is long, that includes more than one number, we keep dividing. Okay, and also like uh, more specifically, let's say you have like an even number, or you have like four items or objects in the array, mm -hmm. and um, like if you take the pivot, right, there's going to be one like on one side, but then two on the other side, right? Yes. And then oh, yeah, so that, that would, the two on it the other matter. side, you just keep going. Yes. So so the the question is that so what if we just have four numbers in an array and we pick this one as the pivot. So then if if we kind of like divide the array into this shape, okay, where the left only includes one one number and whereas the right includes two numbers. So we don't need to do anything after the left because the, the left the only so it must be in sorry it must be in this case, okay. The, uh, the left is less than or equal to the middle. Uh, only include lose one number, and it and it is it must be the smallest number in the array, and then it is the middle part. It is the pivot, and all the values that are that are larger than the pivot uh, are are in the right part. So now, for now, we can leave the last. So for any subarray that only includes one value, we don't need to worry about it. It means that that single value is already in its correct place. So here we just need to worry about this one and keep and dividing and apply a divide step over here. Uh, uh, apply uh, the a uh, divide step over the right subarray, so so we may get a situation like like this, and so so here we just copy and paste the, the values from the two, uh, uh, so so from from over here, and then they form the relationship like this, right? 
Uh, so it would end up being that you would combine them into like one array. We don't need to combine them. So we don't need we don't we don't need to combine them because here when each subarray only includes one value. So first, those subarrays are are just a part of the original array. So we don't physically create a copy for each subarray. So so this is like we got a very long array and we. So virtually, we, we think that we, we imagine that we already split, split them into four parts, but not actually. And uh, so, uh, so they're still in the original array and other values in the original array are sorted at the last stage. Okay, understood, thank you. Okay, okay. so, uh, okay, so I got a question, private message. Okay, so from the chat, I was seeing that, can I upload the, the this recording today, yes. Okay, so, uh, so, okay, uh, then I just finished this part. So explaining the big, the big picture of quicksort. And uh, so, so here uh, is what I want to say that most of the work are, are uh, so in merge sort, most of the, of the work are done in the combined step, but in quicksort, most of the work are done in the divide step. So even though both of them apply the divide and conquer philosophy, uh, the design of them are totally different. So, and, and here, as you can say that, because most of the work in quicksort are done in the divide step. So we need to spend most of our time on the divide step. So in quicksort, we have two functions. We have two functions. One is named, uh, one is named uh, uh, quicksort and the other one is named partition. And here the partition function basically does the divide job for us. So, so we need to, uh, so we, we, uh, we need to say, say uh, mostly focus on this part. Okay, focus on this function. And so again, if we look at the, 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 this function, uh, so, we, so we take three parameters, A, P, R. So A is the uh, array, and what about P and R? The least most element and the greatest element? No, no not the least and the greatest. Is it the index? Yes, it, it's the beginning index and end index of the subarray that we want to divide. So for example, over here, over here, uh, say that uh, at this stage, if, you, if you, we want to divide this subarray, this subarray, so P is the index, of the first element over here, and R is the index of the last element in the array. So, by it's it's pretty much like you are giving the uh, the the beginning address and any address of a I say of a whole street. So it's like the door number in the beginning. And so so for 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 a certain block, uh, the the of the street, the the uh, so so it's the beginning door number is is let's say a hundred, and then the uh, the ending. Uh, the ending says the door number is like say 120. It's pretty much something like this. And uh, yes, correct, the P and R are the beginning and end index of the subarray that we want to divide. So here we have X equal to AR. So X equal to AR and then we have I equal to P uh, minus one and then we have a for loop and an if statement. And here we, we got a couple of uh, two exchanges and then return something, okay? so. Let's look at the details of the algorithm. Uh,
Okay, so this is the third code, and uh, I'm going to uh, get an example. So copy and paste this on 2871. Three five six four three five six Okay, so for uh, so this is the input array, and for the sake of simplicity, we just assume that the array length is is eight, and we are applying the divide step in the first stage in for for the first time. So the index of the elements in the array are this from one to eight. Okay, so the index of these values are from one to eight. Okay, so um, then um, Suppose here we want to divide, we want to apply the, the, the divide step over the array for the first time. What kind of values do we need to pass in as the for, for P and R? So would P be four as the pivot? No. Be one and eight. Uh, sorry? Uh, one and eight, so like for P would yes, be one. Yes, one and eight, eight. yes. So, yes. So here we want to use P and R as the beginning index and end index of the subarray that we want to divide. And here, we, because we want to divide the whole array, so we are going to pass in the first index and last index of the whole array, which are one and eight separately. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here I'm going to write a P over here and R over here. Okay. So next we have x equal to ar so in this example what is so what is ar where is ar uh four yes four. So over here pointed by r so we just need to go to the, the corresponding place that is pointed by r so we we, we got uh, ar as four so here we got basically it is four and so what does what does r what, what, what kind of values does r store Integer. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's integer. But what's? Can we give a name for for R? Especially if you pivot. pivot. The pivot. Yes. Yes. P pivot. This is the pivot, right? So yes, that this is the pivot. So we just we just we just let R store the pivot. Okay. And so next we have I equals to P minus one. I equals to p p minus one. So so for now, what is i? Zero. Zero. Or yes. Two yes. One? Because yes, because p is one. So one minus one is zero. So here we're going to have i as zero. So uh, as we as we talked before, uh, we usually use i and j as the index. So here again, we're going to use i as the index for the array. And now it's just pointed at r. Uh, sorry, at zero. So it, it is just like even so i is just like like the index which is right before the start of the array a and this looks weird uh, for now but it will be clear later okay so next we have for uh, j starting from p to r minus one so we are going to write down the values on top of it so p is one and r minus r is eight so r minus one is seven right so the j can can go from one to seven correct yeah. Okay, so the initial value of j is just the one, and we're going to put j over here at the same place with p. So they all point to the first place of the of the uh, array. And so let's let's go through the uh, uh, the uh, the if statement. If if a j is less than or or equal to x, so here uh, what is a j? Two. Yes. Aj is two. What about x? Four. 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 Yes. 
So is this true or false? False. False. So this is no. This is true, right? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, two is less than or equal to to four. Yes. So this. Yeah, is I thought true. it said equal. This is true. Okay. So then we what we are going to do is that first we're going to increase i by one. So for we're going to uh, increase i by one. So i goes from zero to one. So it is pretty interesting. Okay, i is also here point to to this the same space, and then we're going to exchange a i and a j. So here uh, we have the value of both uh, i and j as one. So this, if we write down this statement, if we uh, if we write down this statement in a clear way, it is like we are going to exchange a one and a one, right? Correct. Because both i and j equal to uh, e equal one. So this is like exchange a one with a one, right? Yes. So it's like we, we, we basically do nothing, do, do no changes, make no change to the array. Okay, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure, sure. And then, um, so we finish the, uh, the, if, the, the, the if statement. And so where should we, so which, where, so which line should we execute after this? Should we go to? The exchange a i plus a one. No. A -R. No. Oh. Oh, we should. So this is a part of the for loop. So we so we just finished one iteration of the for loop. So then we should go back to the for loop, right? Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. So, but before I go back to the for loop, if I say if I make a statement saying that, and so. So, uh, and this is going to be relatively important. So I want you to, to check if this statement is correct or not. All the values from AP to I are less than and equal to X, which is the P word, okay? So here, now we have I equal to one, okay? Are all the values from P, which is one, to one, less than or equal to X, which is four. Yeah, the subarray whose index starting start from p to i, which is basically because now p and i are the same. So we so we just we're just talking about this subarray, which only includes one number. So, so is this number less than and equal to the pivot or yeah, to the x? It's less than. Yes. Okay. So yes, it's less than. Okay. So here in this in this at the end of this iteration, the first iteration, we find that this claim is correct. Uh, but we are going to keep checking it, okay? So then we go back to the for loop. We increase j by one. So j goes becomes two. J becomes two, and uh, we are going to move j over here. We're going to move j over here, okay? So, um, so, uh, so now what is a j? Eight. Eight. A j is eight. Is this true or false? It's false. It's false. So we're not going to do. We're not going to execute the two statements inside the if. Okay. So then uh, we just skip. Uh, we, we basically do nothing in the in this iteration of the for loop. But let's uh, but let's say let's check if this statement is true or not. That's also false. That's also true, right? This is also oh. true, right? So, so because I remains the same, so we're oh, just okay. checking if this value is less than the pivot four. Yes, it's, it's less than the pivot. Okay, so, and also I'm going to, so for now, I'm going to let, let you check another statement. Uh, all the values from whose index starting from I plus one until uh, J larger than X. So all the values whose index starting from starts from uh, i plus one until j larger than x, yes or no? Uh, that's true. Yes. So here, because i equals to one, so basically we're checking if all the values from a two, from from whose index from two to j, which is also two, is 
is la larger than the pivot. Yes, so here the, the, the second subarray is over here. So I'm just going to use this color to use the this two colors to, to mark the left and and the first and the second subarray that we talk about. So the first subarray only includes one number, and the second subarray also only includes one number. The first subarray only includes value that is less than or equal to the pivot, whereas the the, right sub, uh, the second subarray also only includes values that are larger than the pivot, right? Yeah. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Cool. So let's continue. So then we go back to the for loop. Uh, so we increase j by one, so j becomes three. J becomes three, and then um, so so uh, we're going to put j mark j over here. Okay. So what is a j? Seven. 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 Okay, seven. So is this is this true or false? False. No. False. So we're not again. We're not going to do anything. So uh, so, but let's still check if the these two statements are correct because here we we, we just increase j by one. So the right subarray includes one more element. So it starts from i plus one onto j. So it includes two elements, okay? So let me say, are all the values in the left subarray less than or equal to the, which is here, less than or equal to the p word? Yeah. Are all the values in the right subarray, uh, in, in the second subarray, larger than the p word? Yeah, they are. Yes, okay, so yes, we find that we, we keep finding these two statements are true. And then let's continue, okay? So if we, we, go, uh, we, go, uh, we go to the for loop and increase j by one. So j reaches four. And so then we, give, we move j over here. Okay, we move j over here. And then what is a j now? One. Yes, AJ is one, which is, whose value is over here. AJ is one. So is this true or false? True. Yes, this is true. So we, we are going to increase I by one. So I goes, I becomes two. And we're going to move I over here. Okay. And, uh, and then we're going to exchange AI and aj okay we're going to exchange ai and aj so because i is two and j is four so we are going to exchange this value with this value correct so basically or we are going to basically we're going to exchange eight with one am i correct yeah okay so we're going to switch on these two values so then it becomes one and eight okay so this is the change that we make in, in this iteration. And then let's check if these two, two uh, statements are true or not. A, the subarray whose index starting from P to I. So if we mark it over here, the subarray whose index starting from P to I is here, okay? Are all the values in this subarray less than or equal to X, which is the P word? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. okay, how about the statement statement? Are all the values whose index are from i plus one onto j? So i plus one is here. So so then are all the values in this subarray larger than larger than x? Yep, that's true too. Yes. True. Yes. Okay. So then we go back, we go to the for loop and increase j by one again. So j becomes five. J becomes five. And uh, so what is a J? Three. three. Three, okay. So here we got a J as three. So, so here, this is also true. This is true. So we are going to increase I by one. Uh, so we increase I by one. So I got a new value three. Okay. 
So, uh, and then we're going to exchange AI and AJ. So we're going to exchange the value pointed by I and pointed by J. So we're going to exchange seven and three, right? Yep. Okay, sure. So we're going to exchange them. So they become three and seven. Okay, so then uh, we finish this iteration of the for loop. And so let's again check if this statement is true. All the values start uh, of all the values in the subway starting from P to I. So P is here and I is here. So the left subarray actually includes one more value, which is S for the first subarray is starting from P and N and I. Are all of them less than the P word? Yes. And then we again we have all the values in the second subarray from I plus one to J larger than the P word. Okay. Cool. So then we go to the uh, we start another for loop by increasing uh, j by one. So j got becomes six. J becomes six. And so what is a j? Five. Five. And this is going to be true or false. 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 Okay, so we're not going to do anything. But let's check if this is true or not. So because I remains the same, so the left, uh, so the, the first subarray is still less than uh, the pivot. But because we increase j by one, so now the right subarray includes one more element. So the, it is going to be something like this. But again, we find that all the values in it are larger than the pivot. Okay. So then we go back to the for loop and increase j by one. So uh, j becomes seven. And, and uh, we are going to, so j becomes seven. And uh, here, um, so what is a j? Six. Six, okay, so it is six. And again, it is, this is going to be false. So we're not going to do anything. So, and then uh, we finish this for loop. So, but here, because we increase J by one, then the, the right sub or uh, the, the second sub array got one more element. So, so it starts from uh, index four and ends at index seven. So, but still all the values are larger than the pivot four, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so here, uh, okay, we got two. So now basically we divide the array into three into three parts. Uh, the left part only includes values that are less than and equal to the p word, and the the second part only includes values that are. So let me, let me just write it in a more clear way. So at the end of the four, we we did something like this. So we got the the left part less than and equal to the p word. And the right part is larger than the pivot. And then the last part, which only includes one single element, which is it, it holds the pivot x. So, but our objective, if you remember, okay, our objective is this. Our objective is right over here. So we want to divide the array into three, three parts, such that the left part is, is less than and equal to the uh, 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 pivot. And the, the middle part is the pivot and the, the right part is larger than the pivot, okay? So this is our objective. So we're so as you can see now, we are very close to the object, but it, it seems that still we, uh, we are not at the object of objective yet. Our objective is that last part is less, less than or equal to the pivot and middle part is the pivot which is x, I'm just going to write it as x over here. And uh, then, uh, then the, the right part only holds the values that are larger than the pivot, correct? This is our objective. So, so we are at here and we want to go to the blue colors, okay? So if I ask you to, do, to, do, to go from here to here, okay? So what kind of thing can you think about? So how can you go from here to here in, in the most simple way? 
with the least amount of efforts. Well, you could exchange like I plus one and then uh, the end. The end uh, yes, yes, exactly. So what you can do is that you pick the the first element from the from from uh, here the first element from the middle array and exchange it with the pivot. We just exchange change them exchange them. So then we will be able to reach this stage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any question? Right? So this is really this is really tricky, but it's it's quite smart. So that's why we have this statement. Exchange AI plus one and AR. So I plus one, this is I plus one. Oops. So I plus one is here. So we're going to exchange the two values, okay? So we're going to exchange them. So after the exchange, after the exchange, so we're going to exchange them and we got four and eight, okay? So after the exchange, so we basically divide the array into three parts. This is X and this is all the values that are larger than X. Am I correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So, so then we, we basically reach the stage that we want to be, okay? We want to add, we, we want to stay, okay? So we finish this. And then, um, so, uh, so then the, the last step is this, okay? Okay, we're going to return I plus one. Tell me, what is I plus one? So why are we returning like I plus one? Wouldn't that just return like the the full four? array? Okay, so it will be clear later. Okay, just just in a couple of minutes. So, but so but be before four. that, yes. But before that, tell me what is I plus one? Isn't that where the pivot is? So like the yes. So yeah. I yeah great. So I plus one is basically the index of the pivot. Okay. So it's here because the pivot is over here. So it returns the index of the pivot. So here, okay, let's go back to the previous picture. So suppose that we are at this stage and we just performed these operations. We just performed these operations. Okay, so so then uh, we, we just perform we just performed this operation and we move the pivot to this place, right? Okay, so after this, what do we we need we what we need to do is that we, we need to keep dividing the left array and the right array, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, but in order to know the location of the left array and the right array, so if I let you know, okay, the pivot index, let's say it is i plus one, or let me just give it a, you a very general number. Let's say, if I, if I tell you the, the pivot is located at place, let's say uh, we call it Q, okay? Let's say we, we, we say the P after, we, if I tell you after the, the first divide step, the index of the pivot is Q. Do you know what it is? So, and then this is the beginning index and end index of the array, which we already know before, okay? So then can you tell me, if I tell you this, tell you the index of the pivot, can you tell me what is the beginning and end index of the left subarray? Well, yeah, because you would just do Q minus one, the final yes. step, and then you yes. already know P, and you do Q plus one. Yes, and then the right index starts at, the right, right uh, 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 or uh, subarray starts at index Q plus one and ends at index R. Am I correct? Understood. Okay, so this is why we need to return the index of the of the pivot at the end of the algorithm. So which is the index 
that this is the index of the pivot. Okay, so and and so if you understand that, let's let's look at the main function for the pivot. And so so, uh, so sorry for for the quick sort algorithm. It's, it's quite simple if you understand uh, what we talked. Uh, so if you if you follow me uh, th through, throughout the lecture. So here. We, we need to call the, uh, so what we want to do is that we want to uh, use quick sort to sort an array whose start index is P and whose end index is, is R. So if P is less than R, what does that mean? Uh, if there's more than one element in the array? Yes, more than one element in the array. In the subarray. If this is because if, there, if the subarray only includes one element, only includes one element like this we don't need to wor worry about it anymore so we don't need to uh, sort it at so if it includes more than one element what we do is that we we call the partition function which is the the divide that the divide function that we we just talked about and which returns you the index of the pivot right q is the index of the pivot am i correct yeah. Okay. So basically here, after you call the partition function, you are at this stage, you are at this stage. So what do you need to do next is that you need to sort the left array and sort the right array, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, so then that that is what 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 it does over here, it, it, it applies the, the, the same function, the quick sort function over the subarray whose index starts from P and ends at index Q minus one. And also it, it sorts the, the right subarray whose index starts at Q plus one and ends at R. So the same as what we talked before over here, the left uh, subarray starts at index P ends at Q minus one. The right one start, start, uh, starts at Q plus one and ends at R. So basically here, after, after the divide step, you are going to sort the left subarray and sort the right subarray, and then your job is done. Make sense? Uh, real question. Uh, sure. Would it be, so when you do, is it possible to call the quick sort function within the quick sort function like I yes understand. yes because okay. this is a recursive function it, it, re, by recursive we mean that this function keeps calling it calls it itself so there is a chance that when you are you uh, when you are just calling quick uh, quick sort function it's just like quick quick sort let me say quick sort triggers another quick sort triggers another quick sort triggers triggers another quick sort So right. we just keep on going until there's one element, right? Right. Okay. Until there is only one element in, in, in the subarray where you apply the quick sort function. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Mm, not here. Do you think it's very hard to understand quick sort? In, in, can you show you the pseudocode that you wrote for okay. me? Over here. Okay. Did you forget to write the i equals i plus one after the if statement with the j and the x or? I equal to i plus one? Oh, the, yeah. I, I, so I just, so here in the pseudocode it says i equal to i plus one. Uh, here I wrote I plus plus. Oh, I okay. I, yeah, I can't. Okay. I, it's just the handwriting. All right. Uh, quick, thanks. Qu quick question, if I may as well. Uh, can you explain the, the for loop statement again? What, what is that? So it's for J equals P to R1. Mm -hmm. So what it does is that it will go through every element from the array starting from, from the subarray, which is before R which is uh, go, go through every element before the pivot. And if that is, so so, what what what, what we do in the for loop is that we, we want to keep this. We want to keep all the elements from P to I la, uh, less than or equal to the pivot and all the elements from I plus one to, to J larger than the pivot. So that after we finish this for loop, we, we are at this stage. 
Any other question regarding quicksort? And you said that we don't need to know the um, O notation for this one? The big o. o notation? What do you mean? I'm sorry, the big O. Big, um, big oh, o the big o, o notation. I mean, the complexity. Yeah, you, you will need to know that. So we, we should, that is the, the, the end. And so I'm going to, so if no question regarding how this pseudocode works, then I'm going to, to tell you what is the complexity. Okay, okay. Is there like certain um, times where you use like a different algorithm than other ones? Because since there are like many different ways to do one. Yes. Like how do you so, know when to so use like which that, algorithm? So, so can, I'm, if I understand your question correctly, what you are asking is that is there a chance that we want to use uh, a maybe insertion sort? Uh, we prefer insertion sort to the uh, uh, quick sort, something like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. So you will be clear after we finish all the uh, sorting algorithms. Okay, so I'm going to give you a conclusion on, on Friday. It's Friday. Okay, so, um, so if there is no question regarding how this pseudocode works, then I'm going to tell you the complexity of the, of the algorithm, of the pseudocode. So in the worst case, this complexity is the same as, is the, same as the, uh, the uh, uh, insertion sort, which is Owen square, but but in practice, but in practice, it is the most efficient one. So this is because, say, um, if this is, uh, if this is the, uh, uh, I'm going, to, if this is the upper bound of the execution time. So let's say if quick, if a quick sort, if this is the time complexity of the quick sort, if uh, this is quick sort, okay, if this is quick sort. So, so uh, in the worst case, it can be very slow like this, going, going square. But, but most of the time, if you apply quick sort, it, so its, it's performance is going to be like in, the, in this area, okay? So, um, so which means that in practice, it's, it's, it, it is the most efficient one. So if you go to, I mean, I, actually, I can, I can pretty much answer your question at the time of now. So in practice, if you go to a job interview and if, if you are asked to implement a, a sort or sorting function, a sorting algorithm, just go for a quick sort. Because in practice, it is the, the, the most efficient. So it depends on like how many uh, elements you have in the array? No, no, it doesn't oh. depend. So, so this, so no matter how many elements are there in the array, in practice, uh, on average, quick sort is the most efficient. So, like, why would it be like more efficient than say, um, like merge sort? Okay, so if so, here, this is the if uh, so. I just show the upper bound of the execution time and lower bound of the execution time of quick sort, and you can see that the upper bound time is 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 quite high. But if I draw the the figure of quick sort, or you uh, merge sort, it's mostly like here. This is the, the area for merge sort. Merge sort. And as you can see, that is worst the case complexity is O and log n, but the lower bound of the uh, of, of the merge sort is is is, is much higher than, than quick sort. So that's why that's why I say 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 quick sort in practice is it, it is better than merge sort. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Okay, any other question? Not for me. Okay, and then that's our lecture for today. Okay, so uh, so we just finished quick sort and next, uh, this Friday, we're going to go over the, the last uh, sorting function and time sort. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Professor. Thank you very much, Professor. Right, thank you. Thank I have one question. I forgot. Sure. I have one sure. question. Sure. So, um, so since we have problems like doing the the merge sort, um, are you going to send 
are, are we allowed to send you an email about the, about debugging the, um, yes, the merge yes, stuff? Yes. All right, I'll do it right now. Okay. All right. Good day, Professor. Good day, Professor. All right, have a good day. Have a good one too. Hey, quick, quick question, Professor. Sure. Um, just as far as like, like an overall, um, do we have quiz and like tests for this course, or because we I mean, do have a, a, a final exam, but no quiz. Okay, so the final exam. Um, and then I know it's kind of early. It is early. Um, how was the final exam? Um. I guess design like is it open ended multiple choice uh, essay or no no multiple choice no essay it's just based so it's it's pretty much like our lecture uh, I'm going to I'm going to say say uh, check if you understand the 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 pseudocode correctly okay so it's it's going to be based off of the pseudocode yes okay okay right. yes um so I'm, uh, no coding like do should we have a clip like downloaded and everything up no 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 Okay. All right. Sounds good then. Thank you. See you Friday. See you.